guys, so welcome to my somewhat belated March favourites. I had so many favourites in March that I still needed to make sure I did this video even if it was a little bit late. So I hope you're still excited to hear about all the things I enjoyed because there's quite a few that I think you will enjoy too. So without further ado, let's get into the favourites, shall we? As always, let's start with entertainment. The film I want to mention in this month's favourite is Logan. I went to see Logan in the cinema by myself on my birthday. Which I know some people instinctively react to is, oh that's such a shame, but it's not. Um, my birthday was on a weekday but I had it off. Um, work, I was at uni in the morning and then I decided to spend my afternoon doing something I loved and that's going to the cinema by myself which is something I really enjoy and X-Men, I love X-Men so why not? I did spend the evening with other people so I think it's a really good thing to be able to do, go to the cinema if you enjoy the cinema and we encourage you all to do it, that's kind of a favourite as well but Logan was amazing guys, I hated the first Wolverine film I never watched the second Wolverine film because I hated the first one so much, although I've heard slightly better things. But this one did look like it might be something worth watching. And it's set in the year 2029, so after pretty much every single other X-Man film. And it follows Logan, Wolverine, and Charles Xavier. So Charles is a lot older, and although Logan doesn't age in the same way as other people, um, you can he has these signs of aging in terms of his health. And it's a really moving X-Men film. It's quite different but also a nice continuation of the story and it is very emotional. It had me crying in the cinema. Yeah, I don't want to say more than that but it, it was it was really good and really well done and I really liked Hugh Jackman and I thought he did a really great job and I would highly recommend it. My favourite TV show though is quite different and if you have seen me in real life in the month of March then you will have heard me talk about this, this television show because I've been recommending it to everyone and that is BBC's Meet the Lords. This is actually only a three part uh, series. It's a three part documentary series with three different hour long episodes concentrating on different aspects of the British House of Lords and it's a behind the scenes looks at how the House of Lords functions and they follow different peers in the House of Lords and stuff that was going on back in 2016 and this is obviously the product of that. I know this sounds slightly boring but honestly it is so worth watching. It's been so well done and it's absolutely fascinating. Now I thought I knew what the House of Lords was but I now know how much more there is to the House of Lords I didn't understand and I think it's really important to understand how something like the House of Lords functions in Britain especially if you live in Britain because, because it has a lot of legislative power and it is a part of our government, a large part of our government so it's really important to understand how that functions and not to forget that the House of Commons is not the only element of our government so it's not just the elected MPs, there are also these uh, appointed peers that have power and many of whom are actually fighting for really important stuff uh, that affects people's ordinary lives in the UK that you'll see if you watch Meet the Lords and honestly guys I adored this series, it was fascinating and I was so disappointed that it was only three episodes long, I would love there to be more seasons of it, I know it's such a weird thing to want but if you watch it you'll, you'll see, it's really really good. Next up will probably come as no surprise to you because I've mentioned it in both my currently reading and my wrap up for the month of March and that is the new audiobooks of Sherlock Holmes narrated by Stephen Fry which are available on Audible. Stephen Fry has narrated almost the entire collection of Sherlock Holmes stories. It's about 70 hours long, it costs one Audible credit and it is hours of fun obviously. I am a massive Sherlock Holmes fan and I love rereading the stories and having this new way to consume them has been so much fun and I decided to start listening to them from beginning to end of what's available in the Stephen Fry versions, which is something I've never done in my reading of Sherlock Holmes, read from beginning to end the stories in order. So I'm really enjoying that, I think he's done a phenomenal job of the narration and I think it is well worth the 7 that 8 Audible credit costs if you have that. So 
adore that. But my favourite books of the month were Furies, a poetry anthology of women warriors, which I gave 5 out of 5 stars, and is a wonderful anthology of different poets that I just adored more than I've ever adored an anthology before because I enjoyed so many of the poems in here and just enjoyed the overall sense of reading it. I also ended up giving 5 stars to Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro and I did a full review on this so I won't talk about much about it here but it is a dystopian novel that focuses on the relationships between three main characters as they grow up alongside one another and it's just fascinating and although it had a slow start and took me a little bit to get into I was thoroughly enthralled by the end. In saying that, I also actually gave five stars to two other books this month, so I just had a really good reading month. I also gave five stars to Paper Girls Volume 1, which is a comic book series that has a very similar feeling to Stranger Things, the Netflix series, and I loved this. I also adored Hagseed by Margaret Atwood, which is a retelling of The Tempest set in modern day Canada, and I do plan on doing a dedicated review to that one, so look out for that. But moving on from books, I do have some other favourites I want to talk to you about. The first one is my new child, my plant. I've been wanting a nice plant for my room for a while, basically since I moved into this flat. And I went to a garden centre and bought this one. I don't know where you could get this pot because this was just a little independent garden centre in Camden that I went to and they had this pot. It's not branded or anything. I, th I don't know where it was made but I bought this pot and I bought this lovely plant. I think it's called an arrowhead leaf or something like that. And we are now the best of friends. Her name is Safira and she brings a little bit of life and greenery to my room and I'm just so glad I got her. I just, I wanted a plant like I said for ages but I wanted one that was easy to take care of and I didn't want a succulent. So <laughs> this is what I ended up with and I'm really, really pleased with her. It was also my birthday in the month of March and I just had such a nice time on my birthday. I had a nice time on the day of my birthday and also the weekend before when I had some friends round and I just, Oh, honestly, my friends just made my birthday the most special day. I so much enjoyed celebrating it this year. It's been a few years since I've really celebrated my birthday. Um, I know that sounds a little bit weird, but like, it's never been a massive deal for me since kind of becoming an adult celebrating birthdays. I don't mind if I have a really low-key birthday, but my friends just just made it really, really wonderful and made me feel very special on my birthday. So my friends and my birthday were wonderful. They also gifted me some of the most thoughtful, lovely presents. And I've shown you some of the stationery and books in hauls, but I just wanted to mention a couple of the other funny little things that they got me because I just love them. One of them is this makeup bag from Urban Outfitters from Lauren from uh, Reads and Daydreams, which look at this guy. How fabby. Oh, I love it. This is so, so cute. Uh, my friend Jess also got me this, which I thought was hilarious and I thought you guys would appreciate. And it's unicorn snot. It is body glitter. Not that I have a lot of occasion to wear body glitter. Although we might be going to a music festival in Poland in the summer. So maybe I can whip it out then. But she just thought it was hilarious because it was called unicorn snot. And I completely get where she was coming from. I feel like we were on the same page. So I thought this was fantastic. On the bottom it says fctry.com. I guess that's where you can get it. And my flatmate Celia got me these beautiful Prosecco champagne flute glasses from Ikea. She got me a set of four, not gonna lie. We managed to break one when we were washing up, so I only have three now, but they are gorgeous. And they have laurel leaves all around the top there, and I've been wanting some really nice glasses. And yeah, I just thought it was such a thoughtful, kind present. But honestly, regardless of those lovely gifts, I just had the nicest time with my friends, some who I hadn't seen in a while, and it was really nice to catch up with, others here who I see on a regular basis. They just all made it super duper special, and yeah, had a lovely birthday this month. I'm 25 now, and I have a really good feeling about 25. I think it's going to be a good year, and I'm going to accomplish lots of wonderful things, so here's to 25. But lastly, I want to mention something I bought myself as a sort of birthday treat. And these were a pair of boots that were £22 in the ASOS sale. And how fabby are these? They kind of remind me of something that Daphne from Scooby-Doo would wear. 
sort of pink ankle boots and I just love these. I think they were well worth the £22. They were pretty darn comfortable even though they've got a bit of a heel on them and I'm just really pleased with them. And lastly in terms of internet stuff, I mentioned this in a recent booktuber shout out video but my lovely friend Jill started a YouTube channel finally. I've been trying to pressure her in to do it for ages and it is one of my favourites that she finally started because she just has wonderful taste in literature and I'm really enjoying her videos so far so if you're interested in checking out her channel I'll link it down below. I also filmed a book break video that I found really interesting to film and um, think you guys might find interesting as well which was how to get published. I interviewed some of the uh, head publishers at Pan Macmillan's imprint Mantle and I just found their answers to the questions so interesting. It was a video I really really enjoyed making and was very tempted not to share with everybody. Don't want to give away all those publishing secrets until I've published my own book but yeah I thought the video turned out really fascinating and I know some of you are probably interested in that kind of thing so if you haven't seen it already I will also link that down below. That is everything I wanted to mention in this video however I hope you enjoyed it and found a few things of interest to check out. I know there was quite a few. Until next time guys happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!